Uh, first, I want to know how, how familiar with you, were you with the Hardy Boys or the Hardy Boys characters before joining the show? Had you read any of the books? Had you seen any of the adaptations before? Yeah, yeah, I had. Um, I mean, growing up, uh, there's always kind of a Hardy Boys book uh, nearby on every shelf, so to speak. Right. It was like a sort of a, a cabin, a cabin book type of thing, you know. And there was not a lot to do. I'd always pick up a Hardy Boys book, so I was like super familiar with the books, and then. Um, when I when I booked the role, I went and watched a couple episodes of the Parker Stevens uh, version of the TV show, which is just super fun and and obviously its own thing outside of what what we did with with the uh, with sort of our show. But uh, yeah, I was super familiar. Awesome. Do you have a favorite story or book or adaptation that you were most familiar yeah, the, with? The Tower Treasure is probably the classic. I mean, I think it's one of the first books actually. Um, but that that one. There's even some sort of uh, we have some sort of Easter eggs to that book within within season one of the Hardy Boys uh, with with Chet Morton and and his truck uh, which is called the Prince uh, that's in the series so I think that book uh, is probably one of my favorites. Cool, uh, that's gonna be super fun to see all the new little hidden Easter eggs that are in this series. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully people who have read the books can catch on. Yeah. So you yeah. play the character Frank. Uh, what is Frank like in this series? Is he similar to the Frank that we've known before? Tell us a little bit about your character. Uh, I hope, I hope. I mean, my ambition was always to, to make Frank like he is in the books. Um, and I think that's what we've done is we've taken sort of like this vintage approach and what should feel like the older books and, and Frank being this uh, sort of, uh, mature for his age, intelligent, and sort of an intuition and, and curiosity. Uh, so I think I think that's in there as well. But with what happens in our in our first episode, uh, Frank is sort of on this journey with Joe to, to figure out who who he is in this new town, uh, and he sort of recreates himself throughout the series. So in, in my eyes, there's a couple different versions of Frank throughout this show uh, that that sort of comes through. But but I would say he's he's a lot like the Frank we know and love. From the books um just intelligent and, and reserved at times and adventurous uh so it should be a lot of fun awesome i love how you mentioned that there's like a, a vintage feel to this version of the show and it kind of reminds me it seems like a a bit of a a darker interpretation kind of like how riverdale is riverdale and chilling adventures of sabrina are kind of taking these characters that we know and love and putting them in this kind of darker world so uh would you say this version is a bit grittier than the original and how so i i would say it is yeah i i think I mean, when you reference things like Riverdale and Sabrina, I do think it's a different entity than those. Uh, this this show really does feel like a feature film over 13 hours. Wow. Uh, it, it's got an indie film sort of vibe. And, and when you talk about, like, the darkness to it or the grittiness to it, because it does deal with some, you know, mature subject matter in the sense of, uh, um, you know, there's loss, there's, there's death, there's family, there's love, there's all those sort of heavy aspects to the show but i think the darkness comes out of necessity to the story uh i don't think we went out to sort of make something that was dark or um more mature than the books by any means but it just deals with uh the story and and there are some some sort of dark moments and some also some really really happy bright moments within the series but I think I think it's similar now, you know, with with younger audiences, they they are more mature than they used to be, and they do need um, something to attach themselves to or sink their teeth into. Uh, and I think we did a good job of doing that. That's super exciting because it's it's really interesting to see the Hardy Boys. Uh, I researched them, and they started around the 1920s, so they're pretty much 100 yeah. years old now. So it's so yeah. interesting to see hundred in a hundred years what this you know, how far they could go and the many different genres that they could partake in. Right, yeah, and that, that's what's exciting to me. Is I hope people feel nostalgic watching the show. And I know, like, even being on set and shooting, it was just this weird sort of nostalgic memory of picking up a book and reading it, except you're there and you're creating these scenes and you're creating these characters. Um, so it's, it's crazy. Almost 100 years later, it, it does feel like you're still... Um, you still have your feet in the 1920s in a way. And that's something, you know, even coming down, this, the show's set in 1980, um, so it's not exactly 100 years uh, from when the books came out, but obviously, you know, in real life, it, it's 100 years later, and, and it should still feel like the original books. Um, like we said, that sort of vintage feel, um, which 
which is exciting. Yeah, we're all looking forward to it. It sounds super interesting, and it seems so nice to see these two familiar characters that everyone seems to know and put them in this new kind of setting that they have. So it seems like there's something in the show for people that are a fan of the old Hardy Boys or maybe people that aren't familiar with the Hardy Boys in general. It seems like there's something for yeah. everyone to enjoy. Yeah, hopefully hopefully there's a, a little piece of the show for everybody. You know, and I do think it's a show that if you didn't know the Hardy Boys, it's it's easy to watch, you know, like it's totally, you could totally get into this as its own thing. Uh, and who knows, maybe we'll get some people to read the book. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. That'd be fun. Yeah. So yeah. you mentioned how there are different aspects of it emotionally and different things through the story, but are there also some kind of, you mentioned some lighter moments, are there some comedic moments? What's it like playing oh, so yeah. many ends of the spectrum emotionally? Yeah, I mean, the other thing is it's an adventure story. Like this first season is, is just a full-on adventure story with kids getting into trouble and figuring it out along the way. Uh, so this this does sort of turn into like an ensemble adventure piece and the comedic moments come out of, you know, uh, Alexander Elliott and, and, and Riley and uh, Christian Perry who and Chet, obviously, who sort of play the gang around the Hardy Boys. There's so much great humor between uh, uh, Joe and Biff, uh, who plays the deputy's daughter. Uh, some of the scenes they have are just so fun and funny. Uh, so they're, they're, it, it, is, it is heavy through the first sort of a bit of the episode with, with what happens with Mom. But uh, it's met with a lot of uh, friendship and, and, and humor. That's so cool. So speaking of Alexander Elliott, who you mentioned, who plays your brother Joe in the show, how did you guys develop that? He's kind of your partner in crime, too, in the show. So how did you yeah, guys develop yeah. that brotherly relationship? Well, it was funny, actually. I was, uh, I was actually the last to be uh, cast or brought in. So basically they had, they had set up everybody, uh, and they were still looking for Frank. So when I showed up uh, at the table read, I think I knew I was doing the job for about – four days oh, wow. I live in Vancouver and they they flew me out there so when I showed up at the table read I just kind of gave him a big hug and I was like well you don't really have an option <laughs> <laughs> so and so it just kind of like melted into this uh we just got really close really fast and, and Alex is so open uh it, it was just so easy and I, I he's truly a brother like I, I love him to death and uh, we got along incredibly well and just had a ridiculous amount of fun. And I, I have three brothers in real life, but I, now I have four in my mind. Oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. But that's awesome. I bet that's going to show on screen, too, the connection between you guys and the whole cast. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's a huge through line through the show, the, the brotherhood. And, um, I'm, I might be skipping a question ahead, but uh, no, I, think, please. I, think it's, I, think, I think the whole series is sort of teeter-tottering on this relationship of brotherhood through loss and, and the show's about family and how important it is to have people with you and helping you and, and the brother connection is kind of so at the forefront of the show and there's there's friction between their personalities I think what people will see is that they sort of grow to realize they need each other more than they thought they did um, and that'll be a cool little sort of hidden message throughout the show that sounds awesome, especially since they're in this brand new setting. Because the characters, the characters that we know, they're not only in this new setting in the form of the show, but in the show, the characters are moving to their mom's hometown. So it's like they're dropped yeah. in this new reality. Yeah, that's so cool. So, so I'm excited to see how they how they interact with each other and how they interact with the world around them. Yeah, that's that's the other thing is like when you pick up when you pick up uh, halfway through episode one, they're in a completely new place and they don't know anyone and they don't know anything. So it's kind of like you're with the boys through the story, and, and you get to experience it with them, and you get to find a Bridgeport with them and find all these you know beautiful people that they meet along the way. That's so great. We're all super excited to see it. So let's see. I want to ask you a little bit more about the mystery aspect. What's it like to play? to play a character in a mystery that has suspense and you know you do some sleuthing throughout the show or quite a bit of sleuthing everyone in the show kind of does their own kind of investigation so what's it like to play such mysterious characters in a mysterious story is it fun to play a detective of sorts oh it's a blast it's, it's the best and the most fun part is when you're waiting on a script to see where the story goes right mm -hmm. and and when you read a new script and, and, and you sort of get excited to, to, to play out this, you know, the finding of a clue or or the, the meaning of a, a shady character and, and that sort of thing. And what's great about the show in the mystery aspect is it's hard to trust anybody. 
And mm-hmm. so when you're watching it, you're trying to, to deduct with them. And that's always been one of my favorite things, you know, reading mysteries or, or watching mysteries. Or I mean, one of my favorite shows growing up was Scooby-Doo. And it, it's, it's the same story every time, but you attach yourself so, like, easily. And, and it's such a fun adventure to go on. So I have a blast doing it, like playing a detective's fun and, and going into a scene and working with new characters as well, right? Yeah. Because uh, there's so many people in this show that give clues to the boys and, and they get to investigate. That's so cool. I bet a lot of the fans are going to look forward to kind of putting all the clues together themselves. It sounds like there's going to be quite a few cliffhangers maybe for them to look forward to. Yes, absolutely. Ooh, it's, it's funny with because uh, I think who is dropping all thirteen episodes at once. So I'm excited to see who finishes the series first uh, <laughs> and uh, see how fast they get it done. That's going to be super cool to see everyone's reaction to it. Yeah. So is that I know you're you're kind of sworn to secrecy as far as spoilers, but does that mean that maybe the season one finale ends on a bit of a cliffhanger? Uh. Yes. <laughs> without without any spoilers or, or anything else, I do think there's a, you know, this feels like an origin story for the boys. And, and when we meet them, they're just sort of learning that they have this inkling for detective work. And, and it's always a little fun little joke in the show that with their dad, uh, Fenton Hardy, who, who is a detective uh, and a really good one. Um, it's sort of this joke in the show that is a genetic sort of thing. Uh, so this is like an origin story, and, and eventually, I think at the end of the season, it kind of opens this sort of page that they can go do more uh, investigations and, and, and get stuck into other trouble as brothers. That's going to be super fun to watch, and it's interesting how you brought up that their father is also a detective and clearly more of a seasoned one than they are. So how does their approach to looking for clues differ from their dad's? Well, I think dad's doing a job, you know, and, and he's equipped and he, he has the, he has the know-how, whereas the boys in, in, in this rendition, they, they, you know, there's a bit of luck mixed in. There's a, there's a bit of, you know, they don't really have an option, right? Because, because of what happens in episode one with, with, with the mother, um, they, they go on this sort of, they don't have an option not to. And, and that's how they find stuff out. And they stumble across all these things. And I, I think where they differ with dad is, he goes on his sort of uh, wild goose chase overseas, uh, and the boys are left home with Aunt Trudy to sort of pick up the pieces. And, and, and Frank and his father do sort of have phone calls, and they work together, and they give each other sort of clues and tip-offs, but, but they differ for sure. That's super cool. I think it's going to be fun to see the contrast between the one generation and the younger generation. Do you think that also kind yeah. of plays into it too, how these guys are kind of – young and I don't want to say unexperienced but this is their first time really going into that that mystery kind of field so do you think that that makes a difference to them between their dad who's got experience doing that yeah absolutely yeah the, the generational gap is, is definitely a big thing and and, and uh, the boys are so unequipped and it does get them into <laughs> trouble and it, it does get them into uh, a lot of situations that you know like we said hopefully at the end of episodes you're left wondering how they're going to get out of it that's cool though that's going to be fun for the audience to see yeah. If they were good at it and they figured everything out after episode they one. Story to tell. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> that would be as fun. Uh, page one, the boys figured it out. Okay, next show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have it last yeah. until that entire season. So if there is a season two, um, what would you like to see with I know that's gonna be hard to say without spoiling something that happened throughout season one, but yeah, is there something think... you'd wanna see develop more in season two? I'd, I'd love to have sort of like a, like in season two, obviously the relationships that developed through season one with all the kids in town and, and all these things we find out about Bridgeport and its roots that go back hundreds of years, because uh, that's an aspect of the film as well, uh, of the series as well, not giving too much away. I think in season two, it'd be fun to sort of do uh, like smaller, small, because basically the, the, the mission kind of takes up the entire season. I, I think it'd be fun to do sort of like, one or two episodes on the boys figuring something out and sort of have this gang of detectives up in, up in the Hardy Boys attic figuring it out together. Uh, and and that, that, to me, would be a lot of fun, sort of having this 1950s detective sort of vibe to it would be, would be comedic and, and enjoyable. Yeah, that sounds super cool. I'm sure fans would love to see that. Yeah. So, finally, this is uh, here's one question for 
people that before they've seen season one of the show, if you could give anyone three words to describe the first season of the Hardy Boys, what would they be? Three words. Um, family, trust, and adventure. Ooh, sounds interesting. Sounds like all the all the stuff that makes a good show. Yeah, well, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, super cool. We're really excited for it to premiere. I can't believe it's only uh, less than a week away from premiering. Away now? I think we're I think we're five. Yeah. That's so great. Crazy. So congratulations yeah. on almost being at premiere date. Thank you. We're so we're all super uh, excited to to watch it and to meet this new version of the Hardy Boys. And thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me about the show. We're all looking forward to it. Thank you so much. It's uh, really fun talking about it. Awesome. Thanks so much. And uh, we'll have this up shortly. Thanks so much for taking the time today. Beautiful. Okay. You have a great day. You too. Alrighty. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.